Hi, my name is Trey Genzo, Metalhead Tools, and this is the EFI. The EFI by Metalhead Tools. It's the Elite Folder Indicator. What's unique about this, as opposed to other rise fall indicators on the market, are you have your pinholes can articulate in the full 360 degrees. This one articulates forward and backwards. You have a tension setter right here that you can actually gauge how much tension you're loading on your spring via the dial indicator. And this little slot right here is for you to load the spring. You can actually move the spring up and out of the way, put the blade in with these, and then go on about the profiling of the tank or spring. So if you've got a slip joint that you've cut out, what we'll do the first thing, move the center piece out of the way because you're not going to need that. Put the spring in the back one. Move that up, take your blade. Now as on any slip joint, you want to figure out what angle you want that blade. Uh, it's your discretion, I don't think you'd want it down there, I don't think you'd want it up there. Or it's a little bit sloped down. You can then lightly tighten the back. There's a set screw underneath that will tighten the blade. And then you want to rotate it to see if that's actually where you want it to sit. And this one looks like the spring's a little bit long, so I'm going to move it up some. That gives us enough room to take off the spring instead of the tang area. So now you would take that off as you do on a slip joint. You would adjust your tang, adjust your spring till it sits in the position that you want it to. Next step and I will change to a blade that's already been profiled. Move this up. Everything articulates so that you can get the right angle. There's a scribe line right there at the top to give you kind of a visual aid. So let's say something like that. And tighten that down. Tighten that down. Now, in theory, let's say you're a couple of thousandths off. We're going to set the dial indicator at zero. You're at two. And you're at three. You can actually dial this thing down to zero, zero, and zero, which we'll get into in a little bit. But from this point, you'll now need to load the spring. And we do that by moving that little feller. into position while everything else is lined up. So we'll tighten up the back, we'll tighten up this one. Everything has T-slot um, nuts underneath and a groove that they all fit in. So you can tighten that up. Now that may or may not be the tension you want. Probably not. We look a little loose there. So another unique part about this jig is you can tighten that tension. We're at zero. Let's see what going ten thousandths will do. We just move the ten thousandths. We'll lock the little handle in place. Zero it out again. A little better, still a little bit of wobble. We go another ten thousandths. And this may be different than the way you build slip joints. For one, you don't have a unit like this. But I believe it's a faster, more efficient way. That's pretty good. Might go another five thou. And understand I have not taken anything much out of the spring area here. So in theory you could go another 10, 20 thousandths, really put some pressure on it, and then start back in your spring 
tension off. So I'll loosen that again. Yeah, we can go, let's go 15. Tighten it there. We're going to zero out. We're at four and we're at five. So remember that, four and five. So that's locked down. I'm going to now lock down the lock screw. Make sure everything's nice and snug. Now you can start working on the rest, taking it down from that four thousandths off the back of the tang and the five thousandths there. Now, you're wondering what that little groove is. I've supplied each one of these units with a little brass bar. This is to enable an ease of taking the blade on and off. That's it. Now you can adjust your blade, you can adjust your spring. Super simple, easy, and quick. And we're still at four and five.